Okay, section 904 is the foreign tax credit limitation. As with everything else in life, uh, especially in this area, the amount of potential detail and complication and crazy results and what have you in specific areas is, uh, you know, just uh, never ceases. But the basics are pretty simple, and if you understand conceptually what they're looking at and why they're there, then you're much farther ahead. Okay, so first, let's just look at what this says and then say, okay, what is it doing and why is it there? The amount of the credit taken shall not exceed the same proportion of the tax before credit as taxable income from sources without, without the United States bears to his entire taxable income for the same taxable year. What is this uh, saying in terms of uh, uh, a formula? Simple formula, U.S. tax before foreign tax credit times foreign source taxable income over worldwide taxable income. The foreign tax credit is a benefit. It's allowing a reduction, full reduction of the U.S. tax to the extent that you've paid foreign taxes because, as we had said Previously, the, uh, the intent of this system is to give the country of source or the host country first crack at, the, at taking uh, tax dollars, so to speak, from income, which was earned within that other country. We have, uh, we have this, you know, this basic, uh, basic thing. Now we look at this and we say, okay, but we're limiting it. We're limiting the amount of tax which can be, uh, which can be claimed as a credit. Well, why would the U.S. want to limit that? What might they be worried about? Do you think that, uh, do you think that uh, companies only have foreign source income, or do they often earn some foreign source income, some U.S. source income? What the United States, and for that matter, every other country that offers a foreign tax credit, is worried about is they don't want foreign taxes to ever reduce the U.S. tax or the domestic tax on domestic source income. They're protecting, in this case with the U.S., they're protecting the U.S. tax base. So if we, if we look at this and we think, uh, okay, uh, you know, what is this uh, economically, uh, we're, we can sort of, uh, uh, let's say, uh, if we think of this as U.S. tax before foreign tax credit over worldwide taxable income, that's sort of our effective tax rate on an overall basis. Uh, uh, that's our effective tax rate. Okay, if we're limiting that effective tax rate on foreign source taxable income, that also means that there will be no ability to claim credits against the effective tax rate on U.S. source taxable income. This is allowing 
the U.S. to make sure that it will collect every dollar of tax on U.S. source income. That's economically what it's getting to. If we go back a ways, people figured out, and both individuals and corporations figured out, that if they had very high levels of taxation on, let's say, normal business income, rates, you know, paying foreign taxes at rates higher than the U.S. rate, they would, of course, scratch their head. Oh, you're hurting me deeply. You just yawned. <laughs> oh. Anyway, uh, people... It's a good sign. It means I'm trying to stay awake. Ah, oh, okay. Well, if you didn't if you didn't stay awake, I would come around and kick your chair. I have done that in the past. Okay. So, in any case, uh, the uh, the point is that people and corporations figured out that well, gee, if we have, you know, higher, we're paying foreign taxes at higher than U.S. rates. Well, if I can somehow you know, earn more foreign income that is taxed at a very low rate by foreign countries, then that increases my foreign source taxable income. And you know, that's obviously a benefit because I can uh, of avoid any further U.S. tax, I can use those excess credits. I can use, the, the higher that foreign source taxable income is, the better off I am. Now what was happening, uh, this is probably in the 1950s and the, the post-World War II period as especially corporations and some individuals were paying high foreign taxes relative to what they were paying in the U.S. They realized, well, gee, I've got some excess money that's sitting in the bank earning interest income. Why don't I put it in a Canadian bank account? I'll earn the same amount of income, you know, the interest. Doesn't matter to me whether I get it from a U.S. bank or from a Canadian bank. But gee, if I get it from a Canadian bank, it increases my foreign source taxable income. Well, gee, that sounds like a pretty easy way to plan to reduce your taxes. Now, this was the birth, uh, I think in 1962, of the, of the foreign tax credit basket system. Congress, of course, looked at that, scratched its head and says, gee, you know, we shouldn't be either encouraging or allowing people to artificially increase that foreign source taxable income number. We shouldn't be influence, influencing corporations and individuals to take money out of the U.S. banking system and put it into Canada or some other location. So they created a separate category in, uh, in section 904D, which is where these rules uh, still are. At least I, I think it was 904D back then. It's definitely been, a, uh, been 904D for a long time. Uh, they put in there a rule which, says, which said that if you have interest income, you've got to calculate this formula separately for interest and then separately for everything else. The result, of course, was that you could not use the low taxed income on interest to increase the foreign source taxable income uh, applicable to taxes you paid on your business income. Yeah. Uh my question is actually if I earn income from different foreign country, one is with, with a very high tax, tax impost and one is uh, with a very low tax impost, so the tax 
from U.S. imposed to this different the tax credit? I can combine them, or I. Uh, you can combine them. We have an overall foreign tax credit limitation from a geographical and national standpoint. We did not always have that. Uh, we did have at one time a country by country. And in fact, yes, there is still a global uh, overall uh, foreign tax credit limitation in connection with the guilty income that uh, that we'll talk about later, but there was a lot of uh, a lot of comments from I guess primarily academics because anybody from the business community was on the other side of this uh, that it ought to be country by country with respect to that and uh, that was let's say a major a major issue uh, in the new guilty rules that. They did not make it country by country, but they made it overall. So uh, we definitely have an overall thing. Uh, there is an ability to offset, and we often call this cross-crediting, where companies will consciously figure out uh, how they can offset, in essence, taxes and income from high-tax and low-tax countries in order to achieve a better answer at the end of the day. Now, 904D, the one that I mentioned, 904D has gone through uh, just some number of iterations over the years. At one point, there, were, uh, there was actually an infinite number of, of baskets uh, because for certain types of foreign companies, it was a basket for each company that you had an interest in. Uh, uh, so it's, I mean, the history of this is, is really convoluted. Today, we have four categories. Uh, this, you see A, B, C, and D. And uh, you notice A, which refers to section 951A, that's a separate basket for taxes paid on guilty on the global, intangible, low-taxed income, Section 951, Cap A. There's a separate one for foreign branch income, and then passive category income. Originally, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, it was focused on interest income, uh, you know, through the, sort of speak, example I uh, was giving before. Uh, it broadened to all passive income. And then lastly, uh, everything else, which is general category. Is uh, the yeah. passive income the normal 469 or 465 passive, or is it defined differently? It's defined differently. Uh, you'll find that passive income is defined, passive income. <laughs> Yeah, again, this is a good one where you're, you're asking the right question. Gee, where's the definition? and Where does it come from? And is it the same as something else? Is it different? Uh, passive income is something you'll, you'll find in a bunch of different places. In this case, there's a definition of passive income within section 904D, which refers you to the passive income as defined in section 954C uh, and there's you know a bunch of uh, a bunch of rules in there but at the bare, at the very basic level it's going to be your dividends interest royalties gains capital gains uh, currency uh, 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 currency gains and you know and so on things like that now there's it's Broader, but uh, passive for this mean uh, for this generally means something that is because of an ownership in investment property as opposed to an actual trader business. Uh, one could go on forever with regard to this. Uh, I think the the point uh, the final point to make before you uh, escape for the evening uh, is. Uh, I think basically that, again, these categories have to, you have to calculate your foreign source taxable income 
and your foreign taxes separately for each category. Now, typically, uh, the concern historically was that you would have low levels of tax on passive income, low levels of tax on passive income, and high level of levels of tax on uh, general category income. And when I'm referring to low or high, I'm talking about the foreign taxes, not the U.S. taxes. So the the goal of this was not to was to prevent you from uh, using uh, income from passive type things, foreign source income from passive type investments, to artificially increase the amount of taxes on business income, foreign taxes on business income that you could claim as credits. So you have these separate categories. Now note that A and B, the guilty one and the uh, foreign branch income, those were just created in the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Those are new. And, you know, as part of that sledgehammer that I mentioned, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, item for A, uh, the 951A, the guilty uh, one, uh, the rules, and this is in uh, section 960D, 960D, the rules tell you that the amount of foreign taxes you can claim in a, as a credit are only 80% of the actual taxes you pay. So it's sort of adding insult to injury. Only 80%. And for various reasons, it will be very likely that in many cases there may be excess foreign tax credits in that guilty basket, in that guilty category. Now, we haven't uh, talked about it yet, and I'll try maybe uh, uh, the beginning of next uh, session on Tuesday, I'll, I'll try to say something about carry back and carry forward. But normally, if you have an excess foreign tax credit, you can carry it back one year, forward 10 years. Under the guilty, under these new rules applicable to guilty, no carry back, no carry forward of any excess credits in the guilty basket. So uh, it's, you know, like I say, uh, you know, being hit with a sledgehammer uh, in some of these uh, these areas.